was not easy being the Lord's messenger. Ellen White had no control over the messages that God gave her to deliver. And some of them were quite difficult, and she acknowledged this. In 1880, she wrote about a situation at the Vermont camp meeting. She said, I had some very bad, bad jobs to perform. I took Brother Bean and wife and talked to them very plain. They did not rise up against it. I cried myself, could not help it. Let me share with you a story of one of those difficult assignments that God gave her. In fact, from my perspective, it's probably the most difficult that I've ever read about. She was on one occasion given a message for an individual. She did not, in the vision, she was not told his name. She did not see the person. She just heard a voice. And she was told that when she heard that voice, she was to deliver a message. She didn't recognize the voice. Now often when God would give her a message for someone, she would know who the person was. And she, you know, Ellen White was human. And if you've got a bad job to perform, as she just wrote about, why, you could think about it, and I'm gonna meet this person, and what am I gonna say, and that kind of thing. But she had no advance warning. She was given a, heard a voice in this message and given a message. She didn't know who that person was. So she didn't know when she was gonna see the person. Not too long afterwards, she and her husband, James, arrived at a camp meeting. They got settled, and they walked over to the main tent where a meeting was going on. She seated James in the tent, and then she proceeded to walk down the center aisle of that tent. Now, as near as I could tell from the way the story is set up, there were chairs on both sides. Sometimes chairs are in the middle, and you have aisles on each side. Apparently, this was the way the seats were here was there was a center aisle. And she begins to make her way down that center aisle towards the voice that she had heard, and she knew she had to deliver the message. From years of experience, she knew that she had to do what she was told to do, and she had been told, when you hear the voice, deliver the message. Now, the story doesn't tell us this, but in my imagination, I can picture people there in that congregation as the sermon is being preached. There goes Sister White, you know, whispering to each other, there goes Sister White. I wonder what's happening. Well, look, she's walking right down there towards where the preacher is. Well, back to the story as it's come down to us. She got right to the front of that whole tent, right below the pulpit, and she looked up at the man that, she, that was preaching, who stopped at this point, and she said, Brother, I have been shown that you have no right standing in that pulpit preaching to this congregation. Now, how would you like to deliver a message like that to a preacher who's in the middle of a sermon in front of a full congregation. But that wasn't all. She went right on. She said, I have been shown that you have on this campground a woman that thinks she's your wife, and you have children here who call you father. But she said, I've also been shown that in, and she named another state in the United States, that you have a woman there that thinks she's your wife, and you have children there who call you father. You have no right standing in that pulpit preaching to this congregation. Now, when you go to the seminary, they teach you to have some kind of a conclusion to your sermon. I don't know what kind, I don't, this man probably never went to a seminary, but he certainly would have had a conclusion. And this was not it. But obviously the sermon is concluded. He's through. He's out of there. He's off the platform. He's gone. And Ellen White is left to deal with this shocked congregation. Because here was this man living a double life. And this was back in the early days before there was communication, easy communication. He was gone doing evangelism much of the year, so he just conveniently had a family in this state, and he had another family in another state. And so here she is with this congregation. And I think as a human, since Ellen White was a human, and we often forget that, but she was a human being. I think she must have just sighed a prayer of gratitude to God when out in the congregation a man stood up and said, I'm Elder so-and-so's brother, and everything that Sister White just said is true. Several years ago, my brother confided in me that he was living a double life, but he made me swear that I would not tell anyone, but what Sister White just said is true. Maybe that helps us understand what Ellen White wrote in 1874 to Elder Jan Loughborough, a pioneer minister. I have felt for years that if I could have my choice and please God as well, I would rather die than have a vision. 
for every vision places me under great responsibility to bear testimonies of reproof and of warning, which has ever been against my feelings, causing me affliction of soul that is inexpressible. Never have I coveted my position, and yet I dare not resist the Spirit of God and seek an easier position. It was not easy being the messenger of the Lord.